no one expected a sharp increase in interest rates. Well, once that happened, pensions began getting margin calls and they couldn't meet them. And in fact, if interest rates had gone to 8%, and I think they got to 6% over there, if they got to 8%, then according to some of the people close to that situation, whom we have consulted, then the pension system would have collapsed. Welcome back, rich followers. We hope this video inspires you to get started on your dream. So please watch until the end. And if you are new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other educational videos like this. Let's get started. Kathy explains a few data points that support the effects of inflation on several asset classes. If you look at the data 80s, 90s, 2000s, you'll see that inflation came down during times when the economy was very strong. Why? It's because of productivity. Productivity growth is a byproduct, a critical byproduct and an anti-inflationary byproduct of good, strong recoveries. Let's go to the commodity prices. Again, data-driven said, are you listening? We'll start with, from their peaks, we've got gold price, the gold price down 17%, copper down 30, lumber down 73%. Think about that, housing is collapsing. Iron ore down 45%. Infrastructure around the world has run into trouble, especially China. Corn down 17%. Silver down 29%. DRAM prices, which are chips, semiconductors, down 46%. The Baltic Freight Index down 48%. That's an indicator of supply chain issues. The Baltic Freight Dry Index, which is just for dry goods, down 65%. Oil down 29%. And many people have been dismissing these and say, yeah, but they went to sky high prices. You know, they're still not down on a year over year basis. That's not true anymore. Gold is down 3%. Copper is down 17%. Lumber is down 28% on a year over year basis. Corn is an exception. It is up 27%. Again, Ukraine being a big problem there. We have silver down 9%, DRAM prices down 33 oil, oh yes, oil and corn. Oil is up 14%. It's had a big pop recently, but we do think having come down from $130 to $90, it is in a downtrend, mostly because of demand destruction. There's another kind of esoteric price out there. I remember it from my days diving deeply into economics and it's container board prices. This gives you a sense of how tight the box market is because of a huge amount of trade taking place. So they are down 29% from their peak and about 53% from a year ago. Just taking the evidence and putting it together like this, there is a lot of data to be driving the Fed, which is what they say is happening but we don't think it's happening. I just rattled off lots of examples. Markets are selling off across the board and that's very unusual. It's associated with crises and more convincing evidence to us that the Fed is too tight and that it will pivot. And when it does, it will do so, we think, significantly. Now, first, it might simply be rhetoric because they always like to tee us up for what the next moves are going to be. And we haven't heard that rhetoric yet, despite all the evidence I just shared with you. But that evidence I just shared with you tells us that the Fed is going to get the message loudly and clearly somehow. And it may not be showing through in the numbers they want to see, but it will. They are huge lagging indicators. They're basing policy on lagging indicators, not what they're supposed to be doing. But if you take equities and bonds and look at what's happened since the peak, you will see that the loss to investors is more than twice what we saw in 08, 09. That's how bad this is, because bonds are selling off with stocks this time. And one of the reasons for that is a seizing up of liquidity. As I mentioned, if people are facing margin calls or in financial difficulty, they're going to sell their most liquid asset. They will have no choice, especially with margin calls. Most liquid assets tend to be government bonds, and I think that's why we're seeing the backup in government bonds here, despite all of the deflationary signals in the pipeline. Interestingly, 
it feels like we're moving towards a cathartic moment. And I think that the 75 basis point increase, if that's what the Fed is going to do, is going to result in some financial signals that the Fed will have to pay attention to. Maybe it didn't have to pay attention to the guilt trip, but it should because it is the reason that near Lehman event happened in the UK. It is darkest before the dawn. We think the pivot is close and we certainly hope that the Fed gets away from this need for unanimity and a united front when really we have all of these Fed members and presidents for a reason to debate. And we feel that that debate is being stifled. The debate should be driven by data, but it cannot be. If it were, they would not be unanimous in their thinking right now. Kathy then explains the effects of the Fed's decision on monetary policy. Now, we have been expecting serious ramifications, financial and other ramifications, because of this monetary policy. And we've gotten the first one, but most people here in the United States are not aware of it or haven't thought very carefully about it because it doesn't seem to matter to us. But I was in the UK around the time that it had its near Lehman moment. Near Lehman moment means the financial system implosion. And that was just about 10 days ago. Now, what do we mean by that? There is something called LDI, Liability Driven Investing. And it's where pension funds match their liabilities with assets. So they will match one for one the amount that they have to pay out to pensioners as they retire. Now, it would be great if they did match assets with liabilities completely from a safety to the system point of view, but they don't. And with banks and a very low interest rate environment, they got used to using derivatives and taking shortcuts to try and accomplish the same goal. And after a very long period of very low interest rates, I heard someone say the other day, and we were talking about this LDI crisis in the UK, that the reason it's so serious is pension fund sponsors were beginning to think and banks were beginning to think that interest rates would stay very low for a very long time, for as far as the eye could see. And that assumption was built into the kind of derivative activity they were doing. No one expected a sharp increase in interest rates. Once that happened, pensions began getting margin calls and they couldn't meet them. And in fact, if interest rates had gone to 8%, and I think they got to 6% over there, if they got to 8%, then according to some of the people close to that situation, whom we have consulted, then the pension system would have collapsed. But it wouldn't have really have been the pension system. What really would have collapsed if the pension funds were not meeting those margin calls, were the banks, the counterparties in this case, for these derivatives. And so the Bank of England had to step in and basically say pretty much the same thing that Draghi said, the chairman of the European Central Bank in 2011. He basically said, we're going to pull out all stops no matter what. So while the BOE had been almost forced because of currency depreciation into following our Fed with higher interest rates, this was going to cause a great deal of harm to its system. And so it had to reverse its policy. So this is another reversal in policy, or it's a bit of a shift in policy. It's an outright easing, and they said they will continue until October 15th. So now all of these pension funds, in collaboration with the banks, are deleveraging and they have till October 14th. So what do you do if you're deleveraging in an illiquid environment? All markets are experiencing duress today. I think the Fed is a big part of that. So what do you do? You sell the most liquid assets. What are those? Those are government bonds. And so we're seeing U.S. government bonds, which are held in pension funds broad, being sold, even though deflationary pressures are mounting all over the place. We think this is a bit of a financial crisis, and we think we'll see it elsewhere as the Fed 
continues to raise interest rates, as it seems want to do. Certainly this week was full of speeches from all the Fed members reminding everyone that they're going to take interest rates up until we get to 2% inflation. So we'll see what happens on October 14th. By that time, I think they will have been deleveraged and will be past the maximum pressure associated with this guilt trip. If you found value in this video, we would like to give you another video for you to enjoy next. Please like this video and share it with your friends on social media. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here, so you won't miss another one of our videos. The more you learn, the more you earn.